Okay. Yay, we are live. All right, and welcome everyone to tonight's talk. Um, we are looking at interviewing uh, Sarah, and she's a personal trainer with a fantastic story behind her. So I'm so excited to interview her tonight and share her story with you guys. Um, the topic for tonight is a healthier, happier, more confident you. So I'd encourage you guys to tune in um, and listen. And if you've got any questions following tonight's talk, you're welcome to contact Sarah. I just find her story quite inspiring and I'm quite excited to dive in. So welcome tonight, Sarah. Oh, thank you so much. Lovely to be here, Nora. Thank you for coming. So do you want to tell us a little bit about who you are and how you got into personal training and fitness, a little bit about your background? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, so I've been training for roughly, not that long, two years, two and a half years. Um, I used to work um, ITV, used to work in television, um, and I wasn't really massively fulfilled in my job. So I started running, nothing big, just running at lunch times, doing 5Ks, along the river, in the South Bank, so it was very lovely, it gave me a bit of breathing space. Um, and I wasn't really enjoying my job, I was stressed, I was anxious, I was feeling a bit undervalued. So going out for these lunchtime runs hey, gave me a bit of space and uh, made me feel good that I would come back and run some of that stress out. And then I, um, and then I was asked by a group of people if I would run the London Marathon. And I thought, hang on a second, I only run 5Ks at lunchtime and they put my name down uh, without me asking me oh, at, wow. a press place because I used to work at ITV so they put my name down and I was like, hang on, Jeez, <laughs> this is crazy. Um, and I kind of got swept up in it. I thought, well, I've got to do it now because they, they want me to do it. I'm going to raise money for the Dogs Trust. People That's good. Sponsoring me. Yeah. Good, good, good. Do it, I? What am I going to do? <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of started training for it thinking, am I really going to do it? Um, and I did do it in the end. I did do it. And I was so inspired by other people. Yeah, I was amazed that I could do it. But I was so inspired by other people, other people's stories. And the people I saw doing it, they were running for loved ones, charities close to their heart. You know, what normal people can achieve. It's amazing. Yeah, when they have how, passion behind them. How long did it take you to go from running a 5K to actually being able to run the marathon? Do you know what? It was probably not long enough, really, but it was probably about four, four to five months, which was a bit mad because no, that's all. That's not that long at all from no running ever before. Not well, not I'm running five k, running twenty minutes, half an hour. Yeah, but so pre was, previous to so you starting the five k's, you weren't running before that. Um, no, not really. I mean, maybe that's a, really a tiny little bit, but you know, tiny, tiny yeah. little bit here and there out with the dog. So um, it was quite daunting. But I think the fear was the fear was a motivator. I was thinking, I've got to do this. Mm. You know, I think I'm going to do it. Do you know what? I'm going to do it. Um, so talk to me about like your mindset, like when you were training for the marathon. Because I imagine that to go from 5K to all of the miles that you have to do for a marathon, it's quite a lot of training. So were you running every day? Did you have a support team around you? How did you motivate yourself when you felt like, ah, actually, I don't really feel like running today? Yeah. Well, absolutely. I mean. First of all, it was the amount of time it takes up. So I had a full-time job, working in central London, you know, five days a week, commuting on the tube back and forth an hour each day. I was thinking, how am I going to fit all these runs in? You know, how, how am I going to do it? So in the end, I thought, well, do you know what? I'm just going to have to run home from work twice a week from the South Bank in central London up to sort of Muswell Hill, Highgate. Um, so I thought, if I can combine my commute with my training, it's not going to take too much of my time up because by the time I get home from work, I'm not going to go out on a two hour run and then, you know, I'm going to be exhausted. So I thought, right, you're going to have to build it into your day, run home from work twice a week. It was about eight miles, but it was uphill the whole way and then go on a long run at the weekend. And I just thought that's the only way I'm going to, I'm going to fit it in. Um, I like that. Yeah. Cause yeah. it's a mindset change as well. Cause you've got to arrange like, I would imagine that you've got to change your entire the, the entire way you can meet with packing clothes and being able to get ready at work and and just getting a little you know rucksack making sure you don't take too much stuff with you because you know you've got to put in your back and run home and i oh, ran yeah. along the bus route to start with think with my oyster card because i thought i'm never going to make it home you know and a couple of times i had to jump on the bus <laughs> are you serious that's so yeah. funny <laughs> i've got to get i've got to know this bus route i've got to know it off my heart oh my god um, jump on the bus <laughs> 
And then <laughs> over time, I, I jumped on the bus further and further and further away. But I know oh, that's really good. Safety net, you know, I thought I can get on the bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. Um, and it would take me about an hour and a half, but it'd take me an hour on the tube anyway. So yeah, yeah. only another half an hour out of my day. I love that. I love that. That's how I thought, how am I, you know, how do you fit it in? If you're working full time and you've got duties to do, you've got kids, you've got dogs, how, you know, you can't just, yeah, spend your entire weekends or take days off doing it. So it has to, has to work in your lifestyle. I think that's a really important point. And it's possible because you just have, it's, it's almost as though when you set yourself to, when you set yourself a goal, there's always a way to accomplish it. It's just figuring out where the puzzles, where the bits of the puzzles, you know, pieces fit within the bigger picture. So that's really good. So when you ran a marathon, what was that like? Well, I mean, the, the training was in some ways harder because it went on for longer, I suppose. And it was quite lonely. You know, I'd say to my friends or my partner, do you fancy coming on a 16 mile run with me on Saturday morning? No, no, not at all. <laughs> so, you know, so it was quite lonely, the training actually. Um, I'd listen to podcasts and try and get through it that way. But the actual day of the marathon, yeah, hugely nervous, getting up early the night before thinking, oh my goodness, I need to eat all the right things. I need to drink all the right things. I need to sleep. But of course, like any major event, I couldn't sleep because I was so nervous. But um, it was a really, yeah, I was struck by how emotional it was actually. Um, yeah. Because so many people obviously were running it for mm. people that passed away. You know, they had their, their vests on with their names on and the crowd mm. was shouting out their names. Um, and that I saw some people that had injuries early on or had pulled a muscle and they were limping a lot. And I was thinking, oh my God, but they were going to finish it, the determination. It was mm-hmm. really quite humbling, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I was really inspired by people. I thought these are people, people like me doing this amazing thing. Um, you know, and, and they, they did it and they were just driven to do it through, yeah, a passion or, or a loss or just a real burning to sort of make a difference but the crowd were amazing and they were really behind us and that really spurred me on shouting your name out you know people handing out sweets water um so it was quite it was a real humbling experience it made a real big mark on me really never I'm very emotional when I finished you know very emotional um so it was a huge it was a huge thing it's a huge thing didn't quite realize when I started training how you know what a sort of turning point it would be for me really Find that a little bit more. So, what what changed? What pivotal thing happened where you thought, okay, this is a bit different? I think because it was such, it was. I'd kind of gotten used to the idea that I was running the marathon because I spent all these months training for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, what it was, it was other people's reaction to me, sort of my mum, my aunt, my sister, my friends, my partner. They were so overwhelmed that I was doing it that I couldn't quite, you know, I couldn't quite believe it. I was like, yeah, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm running this marathon, that's what I'm doing. And they were so, yeah, overwhelmed by it that I was quite taken aback by their reactions. Um, and they were quite emotional. Um, and I was you know, I was thinking, oh, well, it is a big thing. You know, I, I was really surprised by other people's emotions and reactions to it. And that made me stop and think. And then, yeah, after doing it, it felt like such a big achievement because I'm not a marathon runner. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not advocating everyone runs a marathon. It's, I mean, let's face it, it's extraordinary, really, um, <laughs> that, that, body, that the body does it. And, um, but it's amazing what you can do, the determination, and you set your mind to something. I think that was, yeah, what I, you think? I wasn't feeling good at work. I wasn't feeling confident. I wasn't feeling valued. So um, did that help you when you were, when you were running? So adding in the runs to your day-to-day regimen, how did that benefit like your mental and emotional well-being with being able to cope with the child? Because I mean, a lot of people go through, not sort of downplaying what you went through, how it worked before. And you need some physical outlet to be able to release that mental and emotional stress. So did that, and I'm a runner as well, so I totally get it. Like running for me is the single best way to it's like a, a it's like a sort of a, a moving meditation yes. by the time you yeah by the time you finish a run I mean you feel you feel amazing so did that did you have that did it have that sort of impact on you after you were running dealing yeah, with really the stresses did. of work if I yeah. had a, a stressful day a busy day which I mostly did at that job mm. it was like right okay, I'm going to run this out, you know, I'm going to run this out, I'm going to work through it in my mind, I'm going to process it all, 
and I'm just going to run and I'm, I'm going to look at the surroundings. You know, yeah, it was busy London, you know, taking all the sights and sounds in, just focusing on my breathing, focusing on getting home. And I just found by the time I did get home, of course I was relieved that I'd gotten home and that I'd made the distance. Mm. But more than that, I was thinking, gosh, I, you know, I have run all that stress out actually, that angst, that anxiety, that... Yeah, built up. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that, I mean, anger, all of those things. Yeah. I'd, I'd run it out, and at least I'd kind of done it in a, in a healthy way. You know, I'd, I'd done this thing. I hadn't had a row with someone. I hadn't taken it out on anyone. I hadn't. I'd done it in a constructive way, and I knew what I was building towards, and it gave me a focus. It gave me a purpose, and I felt, yeah, I valued myself more. I hadn't really thought about that, but it gave me the value that I wasn't getting at work. That I didn't feel important or. I uh, wasn't making a difference and I really thought oh, maybe this is something this this is something I can do I can contribute towards um and I felt the weight of that responsibility to keep on going and it you know but yeah it really was like you say like a, a running therapy you know it really was that you're alone with your thoughts yeah and sometimes I had music in my ears and sometimes I didn't sometimes just silence or a podcast or whatever it, whatever it might be but it was quite yeah real like, real therapy meditative almost um, and don't get me wrong, it's hard as well, you know, going up those hills, but Love that. You know, don't want to make it sound too romantic, but it was, <laughs> yeah, it worked for me, Nora, it worked for me, my, my goodness, you know, I think it saved me on, on a few occasions. I love that, um, I love yeah. that, because a lot of people sometimes think... They struggle to understand how to deal in corporate stress. And, you know, even, even now with the pandemic and people feeling even more overwhelm and almost a different type of overwhelm because you have you're working in different scenarios and you're having to learn how to do everything differently and people just think oh my god like how do I deal with this and sometimes the best thing to do is just to get get clothes on and just go outside and have a run like that's what I do with my little girl and even for the children I mean it's just it's good to get the physical exertion or the physical release of everything that you're feeling mentally you come back and like you can think better things are more rational you feel better and what I like about what you said is that you you weren't you weren't you didn't feel valued at work but you know when you take that time and you you'd understand this as a PT when you take that time to give yourself that time to you you give yourself that value it's like you have you you develop that sense of trust and reliability on you and I think that connection to self is the most important thing because at the end of the day like we're living with ourselves forever like we're our own best friends in a way so when you develop that you know what I mean that relationship with yourself I think that helps you as well to get through anything that life like that life throws at you at least for me I love running so what happened after the marathon what was life like for you well after that I um I'd left that job the job that I hated let's face it that is a word um, <laughs> <You're real. laughs> I was like, that's it um and it I got this newfound confidence but I was thinking gosh what am I going to do now you know new job needs to do something obviously um and I would then take the children um to school with the dogs um and I met a whole new group of women the school mums who I'd never been in contact <laughs> with before but always worked so I never did the school run I never had the time oh, wow. And so I was turning up school run with my running kit on, with the dogs, with the kids. And then some of the school mums would say, oh, are you going for a run? Are you, what are you doing? You, you know, um, and they hadn't seen me before and I didn't really see them. And I was probably a little bit more oh, like the school mums, you know, whatever. <laughs> They're <laughs> lovely. That sounds awful. That sounds awful. I'll be, I'll be honest, be dismissive as school mums. Oh my God, the school mums are the best people ever. Oh, really, really, yeah. They are. <laughs> I mean, my goodness, I'm so glad I met those school moms. They changed my life. So they said, do you know what? I'd love to come running with you. Um, and I thought, wow, okay. Um, they were like, would you, would you do a running club? Would you, we could run twice a week. Let's drop the kids off. And we'll meet at this cafe and we'll go running. Not far, two, 2K, 3K, fine. And I said, okay, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So we started it informally, you know, and people came along and spread the word around the school. And what I noticed was, yeah, they were opening up to me. They were feeling undervalued. They were juggling childcare. They might be been unfulfilled or bored or had no time for themselves. And actually this was half an hour, go for a run, have some fun, have a laugh, have a coffee after, whatever. And they were investing time in, them, time in themselves. They were taking that time. And I really, 
people started to open up and talk to me. And I was quite surprised at that and the power of that. And um, yeah, it, it became a real community, a community of women. And we'd meet regularly and they'd tell other people about it. And then it grew and it grew. And uh, I was struck by, yeah, they're investing in themselves. They're taking half an hour out of their day and they're feeling better. They're getting all their angst out. We're going for a run. They're chatting, they're talking, they're laughing, whatever they're doing. But it's, it's working. It was building momentum and it was, and that was inspiring. And that's when it led me on to being a PT. They said, well, why don't you do your PT exams? Why don't you start to train? And I was thinking, I couldn't do that. I can't be a PT. And then of course, then I thought, well, maybe I can. I did the marathon. I'm doing this running club, maybe I can. So yeah. I kind of, then I did. So that's what led me on to it, was other people's suggestion, really. Other people's persuasion, just putting the idea in my head. Um, and just being inspired again by other women and really wanting to help them, feeling really good about myself again, now feeling really valued and really much more confident and loving seeing that confidence flourish and develop in them. And that was, for me, that was the sort of the best part of all of it. And I realized that's why I wanted to continue on this path. I wanted to be a PT, I wanted to help people. Um, it's the best thing. You know, I don't think I'd really realized that before. And it was quite, you know, like they say, an epiphany, but it was quite a moment. Um, so yeah, it was really inspiring. And I, and I just felt really passionate about these women and how fabulous they were. And they needed to realize how fabulous they were. And I wanted to help them do that. So that's um, why. Yeah, I exercise is a really great way to do that. There's a connection through sweating and pain. And yeah. um, oddly enough, and you know what I find with PTing is a lot of the times um a lot of the times you think you're coming for an exercise session or to train somebody but it's not really that you know it's they're using that session to exercise but also it's that connection with you yes. to release to talk about what's you know troubling them because you're a safe space for them right because i find in fitness you, you you know it's it's quite intimate and people don't realize that um when you connect with a client on that level you become they're sort of no judgment zone because they're coming to you with their bodies and all their flaws and all the things that they want to change and things that they probably haven't spoken to other people about yeah. and being able to connect and develop that sense of trust with a client um, and support them to grow and to overcome their own mental and physical hurdles and blocks and to realize just how great they are individually as they are irrespective of wherever they are on the journey I find that's the most rewarding thing with, with fitness yeah and just bond you just have this you have this incredible bond so I imagine like I used to run um, cross country and track and field for years when I was in the states and of any of any sport or anything that I've ever done the bond that I had with my teammates was the strongest. I just, I don't understand. I don't understand it, but there is just that deep connection that you have with somebody when you're doing something physical, so. And it's really special, isn't it? It's quite often surprising, but like you say, mm -hmm. really quite deep, really quite, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so tell me about what happened. So you finished your personal training qualification and what was life like after that? Yeah, finished that, really enjoyed that. Met some great people along the way, some, some more amazing women, you know. Um, thought fantastic thank god I did this really brilliant actually um, sort of thought I'd found my way really well I think I had so it was yeah I loved it um, and then I sort of uh, passed my exams set my business up so just started okay. to put my flag up in the local park you know give some leaflets out in the in the local high street can I just say I think that's amazing because like that's not very long after you finish like that's a short turnover from doing the marathon to to doing your running club informally making it something formal doing a PT qualification and that's I mean you have you that's different you know you, well, do you realize that yeah I mean I kind of thought well I'm riding a crest of a wave here you know I think I was spurred on by the help of all these other women though the school moms they were really bad oh, moms they yeah were, a great group of moms they were saying come on Sarah We'll mm. stand outside the school gates with you and give out your flyers. Let's go and stand up the local coffee shop and da 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 da. So it was that. It was wow. that. They supported me, and uh -huh. I kind of was really again inspired and taken aback by yeah. how encouraged I was by their kindness and their mm. you know, yeah. passion. Um, and so they helped me. They helped me because I think I would have probably been quite daunted just to yeah, see a lot. The street. Yeah. Gosh, I would I couldn't do that by myself I mean you I mean in PT like you have to do that like before lockdown that was my next thing 
printed, I had a whole bunch of flyers printed, go stand by the train station and hand them out. And to do that, I mean, but you have to do it because like PT is so super saturated. So you've got to put yourself out there. So the fact that you had an amazing team or group of women that were behind you, that's testament to how good you are at what you do and probably the connections that you form and the, and I have no idea of what training with you is like, but for them to be behind you like that, you must have been making an incredible impact on their lives. So well done to you. Yeah, thank you. And I think it was yeah. that connection, like you say, coming through a session running, mm -hmm. but actually it was so much more than that. Yeah, it's always more than that. <laughs> if you're a good PT. <laughs> that surprised me. I was kind of so, oh, wow, thank you. Yeah, I'd love some help. Mm -hmm. Really, we do that. Great. Let's do it together. Okay. Suddenly it's not so scary. Yeah. Um, and that's how I started. And I just, at a bit of word of mouth, and started getting a few clients, starting to get a few one-on-ones. I started to do women's boot camps in the local park, where we do a separate style class, you know, we do, we do battle ropes and we do lift barbells and, you know, and they loved it. I had a whistle and we just did it all military style, but with fun. With you were in your element, right? <laughs> I didn't want to tell them to do, maybe just for half an hour, but they did. Oh God. <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness. And they're paying me for this. And then <laughs> go for a coffee after. So wow, I just enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. And they enjoyed it, more importantly. Um, and it grew, it just grew from that. So it was word of mouth, people seeing my flyers. And then a cafe um, had a downstairs space, um, which they weren't really using. And they were using it for, as a shop for six days a week. And on the seventh day, they weren't using it. So I said, oh, well, can I come and do a class down there? And they said, yeah. And I was like, blimey, great. So I did. So it kind of, then I had a sign outside the shop and then slowly, 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 you know, it grew into quite quite a good business. Um, but then there was another development, Laura, which, you know, having left the job at ITV, run the marathon. Then, just as it was taking off, I went on a, a weekend trip to Malaga in Spain. And... Um, okay. Malaga in southern Spain. I went there. Okay, wow. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. A few years ago. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> but, and sadly, that was where I had an accident. I got run over on a pedestrian crossing um, coming home from a, a restaurant. And it was quite a big accident. By a car or? It was, it was a motorbike. It was, um, and I don't remember any of it. So I was knocked over on a, on a pedestrian crossing, apparently. Went up in the air, fell on my head, and broke my pelvis and got a uh, brain hemorrhage. So I was in hospital for a month in Malaga. I, luckily, I don't remember any of it. I think it's probably best. Um, they have you like in an induced coma or something, or yeah. yeah. And um, oh. luckily, the bleeding oh. stopped, and luckily, I don't have brain damage. But they wouldn't let me leave the hospital for some time because all my sequencing had gone. You know, I couldn't. I could. How do you make a cup of tea? I didn't know how to make a cup of tea. I couldn't tell them. Um, they were showing me picture cards and animals, and I didn't know what they were. Um, oh. And so eventually, after a month, I was then flown back to this country, um, to a hospital here, and slowly um, got better, recovered from the pelvic injury. Thank God, because I'd been doing the fitness, didn't need surgery, didn't need to have pins yeah. in my pelvis. And, um, but it was the fatigue from the brain injury. I couldn't understand it. I'd get up in the morning, have a shower, walk the dog. Oh, that was it. Couldn't, that was it for the whole day. You know, who is this person? This isn't, you know, this isn't Sarah. This, is the, this isn't the person that ran the marathon is starting the business. So that was a real shock. And I thought, gosh, I've just got this business off the ground. And now this has happened to me. So again, it was a real pivotal moment of thinking, right, okay. You know, I couldn't run. It hurt when I walk, walk, try to walk. Um, how am I going to train people? I can't even move. Um, but of course, I did the exercises. I went to see a physio. Um, I got some great help from the NHS. Um, luckily, I had the gym where I could do some exercises to improve my pelvis. And then I learned to live with the fatigue. I did little and often. And then, I, you know, I slowly adapted. Um, and, I, and I got through it. And I got through it. But it was, it was tough. It was a tough mental challenge to think, I've got to keep going here. I've got to keep pushing through. I am going to get How, was, how long was that period from coming home from Spain to going through, you know, the healing journey? 
probably about six to eight months before I would say I was back to full power, back to feeling like me again, really. That's a long yeah. time. The physical injury. Uh, healed. Yeah. Yeah. What, so what sort of things that you do to get you back? I couldn't imagine going through that. And then you've got children and, and you know, that's, that's, that's a lot. So what was your, what were your tools that you used to help you deal with the challenges that you faced with every day because that's a difficult time to or that road to recovery it's not easy and it's I mean it's not meant to be easy there's a lot of a lot of learning and yeah. lessons in there for you as well so what was that like for you that was tough I mean I think initially I didn't really I was thinking well you know pelvis is fixed it's fine you know I'm gonna go and run you know but it was just this tiredness it was just this fatigue it was this my memory had been affected. I couldn't remember certain things. I was feeling my moods were up and down because it was a brain injury. I was, I was really low and then I was okay. And then it, I felt quite right. Um, so I, I did have therapy. The NHS were amazing. I had the charity Mind and Headway uh, came to see me at home, sort of offered me advice on day-to-day -day living, you know, the fatigue. I couldn't accept it. You know, we'll say okay, shower, walk the dog, but a short walk and then go into, you have to rest. You have to give into it. You have to listen to your body and you have to be kind to yourself and you have to have compassion and you have to just give it time. You can't hurry through this process. Um, so grasping that, understanding that. And also I was worried that that was it. Was I always going to be like this? Was I always going to feel this way? Was I never going to get back to how I was before? Um, was I always going to feel a bit tired? Was I always going to feel my moods all over the place? You know, it was worrying because um, I didn't know. I didn't know the answer. Um, and they were, they were telling me it would get better and I would feel. But, you know, all I knew was my day-to-day -day was scary at times. But I guess I had, I guess I did have quite a strong support network. Again, you know, my partner, um, the school mums, again, were amazing. <laughs> I know. I, I, I love the school mums. <laughs> I love the school mums. I just yeah. never. <laughs> Um, <laughs> again, all the people around me, the community of people around me, I have to be very grateful, very thankful, and very humbled by. And that's what got me through. That's what, you know, just the support system to the power of a support system. And just sort of, yeah, just again, listening to my body and just thinking, okay, I'll take it slow. Okay, I'll go on a short dog walk. I'll come back. I'll have a rest. I'll listen to my body. We'll get through this. A little bit of therapy, a little bit of counseling tiny little bits of exercise really small um small steps and slowly slowly i i started to notice, notice an improvement and a change um, and it was such a relief um, i love that because it's like so many people i mean you, you went through sort you went through a life-changing um accident but you had to start all over again <clears throat> and i don't know if you come across clients who are starting from you know the beginning of their fitness journey and they feel so overwhelmed with what to do and how to do it and i mean you've just listed it right there listening to your body giving yourself grace having a support system um taking the time to rest when you need little and often i mean those are all key things that are entail you know success in whatever you do so that that's really really good so when you recovered, um, did you build back up with your fitness and you got back into the, the swing of things again? Yeah, so I, I kind of slowly built back again. I thought, right, okay. Yeah, um, instead of seeing this as a setback, actually, and it was a setback, it was a setback, but I thought, God, it's, do you know what it's given me? It's given me real empathy for others. It's given me a real understanding of what it's like to have had some traumatic event in your life, some injury, some illness. So I started to get a lot of clients who I started to talk about my story. A local magazine featured it and people picked up on it. And then I started to get lots of inquiries, women that had had accidents or inflammatory conditions, rheumatoid arthritis, fibromyalgia, angolizing spondylitis. And I've started to train, help, support a lot of women with those conditions, um, which has been really, really, again, really use the word humbling. Um, and I'm loving helping them and getting them moving and they're feeling better about themselves. But I wouldn't have had those kind of clients, I don't think, or they wouldn't have had the faith in me had this not happened to me, you know, actually. And I have to remember that, I think. Um, and that empathy, that real, you know, that empathy for others and that wanting to help and realising, yes, you go slowly, you know, you take it step by step. 
you might not feel like turning up today. Just put your leggings on. Let's let's just do half an hour. Just do 20 minutes. Let's have a chat. Let's have a coffee. And slowly, slowly. From there. Yeah. And that's been a real that yeah, I guess I wouldn't have the client base I have now if it hadn't been for that accident. I love that because experience. Yeah, people always got I re, that's I think that's my favorite thing from from our interview so far because a lot of the times <clears throat> I have clients who are, you know, struggling with anxiety and depression and things like that and you always feel like and even sometimes myself when life gets tough because that life is life is a continuum of of lessons. It never stops. Some more challenging than others. And so I was thinking, oh my goodness, like why is everything happening to me? Like this is enough. This is so much. Like why me? But when you take a step back, I always say things don't happen to you, they happen for you. But in the midst of, you know, enduring and trying to get through a situation, you don't see that. But when you come through the other side and you realize that this was a lesson to shape you, to mold you, to get you prepared for your next step, you look back on that, you know, scenario as daunting as it may have been then, and you reflect on it with a different lens and you think, well, actually, I'm so grateful that I went through that because otherwise I would not have developed into the person that I am today. Mm -hmm. And I'm a better individual. Yes, it was difficult. Yes, I would have may have preferred not to have gone through that because some of it was so, you know, just so too much. But I've come out a better individual and you just look back on scenarios like that with such gratitude because I'm sure that some of the connections that you have may but some of these clients just give you a deeper satisfaction and a deep, deeper appreciation for life because you also realize that even though and it's not to ever you know um sort of downgrade or that's not the right word that i'm looking for but take away the impact or the seriousness of what you went through because what's traumatic for one person may not be traumatic for another person but you know, when you look back at what you went through and you think, oh my God, that might have, that must have been so hard for me. And you think it's, you have the most suffering in the world. Mm. And you meet people who are actually enjoying and going through more. Yeah. You're grateful because you're like, actually, I, I could have dealt with this and I, and I got through this and I can deal with so much more. So I just think in a way, sometimes when challenging, ha challenging things happen, they're blessings in disguise. So I'm, I'm really happy that you came out of that and you had a, a whole new demographic of clientele open up to you because not a lot of PTs work with those specific uh, yeah, client I'm groups. I'm really grateful for that Nora. Like you say, you know, it might sound yeah. like a cliche sometimes when you talk about these kind of things, mm -hmm. but you know, actually, you know, it happened. So yeah. now I do absolutely feel like that. You know, mm -hmm. but did I? Probably not when I was recovering, thinking, oh my gosh. Yeah. No. But now <laughs> absolutely, you know, I really yeah, I think God, I was very lucky there. You know, I, I came out of that and I'm, you know, I'm okay. I can still do this and I can bring something else to it too. And that deeper level of understanding and empathy. And I think that's really key. And that's, you know, what we're all looking for as human beings, you know, like you say, being a PT, making connections with people. It's what is the most important it's thing. thing. It's a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing. Cause then you just realize that everyone just wants to be happy. Everyone just wants that. That is really the essence of life here. I find with the clients that I have, people just want to be happy. Mm. They want to find a way to connect to themselves. They want to love themselves and they just need that little bit of guidance. And, and really and truly you can't help people. You can only help people to the point that you've gone or to the point that you've helped yourself. So you can't yeah. teach what you don't know. So I think for each of us individually, it's so important that we look at the challenges that we've gone through and identify the ways in which not only have we become stronger and better individuals, but it always comes back to who can I serve? Who can I help today from what I've, from what I've gone through? So that's, that's beautiful. So as we come to the end um, of, of our interview, what are some of the key things that you would say are important for women? Because I know that's your demographic of, of, of who you work with. So to women listening to you and who may think, okay, I'm a mod training, I'm looking to connect with somebody who understands my struggles, um, which I think is important as well, because I think you also have that deeper um, level of trust because somebody can understand and relate and feel safe to express to you what their challenges are because you've been there yourself. So they understand that it's not sympathy, but empathy. You've been, you've lived it yourself, right? Yeah. What are some of your tools or tips that you would um, give to women who are looking to start um, their journey within health and well-being or who are going through stressful times and don't know what to do next? What would you recommend for them? No, well, interesting, because of course we're in this pandemic now, Laura, mm -hmm. you know, so again, you know, oh, another 
barrier or hurdle to climb. Oh gosh, mm-hmm. I've got this pandemic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's go online. Let's start doing online Zoom classes and, and setting up a YouTube channel. And mm-hmm. gosh, you know, how are we going to make connections with people online? You know, it's another thing. It's another thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's always something. <laughs> gosh. Um, and then now we can see each other, thank God, face to face outside in a public space. So that's good too. Um, and people, I think it's a, it's a really key time because people are people are investing in themselves more now. People aren't necessarily going to the office five days a week. Well, they're not spending all that time commuting, so they're, they've got a bit more time on their hands, a bit more time at home. They're starting to think about self care, maybe a bit more, a bit of compassion. You know, they're realizing, um, you know, mental health is always in the spotlight now, and now more than ever, you know, with a potential mental health crisis after this pandemic. People are struggling, they're depressed, they're anxious. They're, um, so I think, really importantly, to realize that you're not alone. Again, I, I know it always sounds a little bit of a cliche, but you're not alone in these things. People are out, other people out there are struggling. They've come through things, but there, there's support out there, there's help out there. And I think the biggest thing is just, if you can make that initial connection, whether it's just sending an email, picking up the phone, sending a text, um, and just turn up, meet, turn up to your first session, meet your PT, just have a chat, just be honest with them. They're, they're a normal person with the same fears and anxieties, just like you, you know, um, and you need to tell them what you need. So we'll just do maybe a short session, you know, half an hour, 20 minutes. Um, just put your clothes on in the morning. I say, just put your leggings on and go. Don't think about it. I love that. Yeah, just don't think about it. it. Yeah. <laughs> Clothes on. Don't build it. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Brush on and go. Yeah. yeah. Cup of tea. Cup of coffee. Go. It's part of your day. It's what you do. It's your investment in you. It's your time. You know. And you set the pace. You know. We'll we'll have a chat. We'll talk about what you're looking for. What your goals are. Why are your goals that? You know. Any injuries, concerns, areas of focus. And we'll slowly work on it. We'll slowly build it up over time. Build up that trust. Um, and that security make hopefully make that connection um and just keep keep the conversation going keep that rapport going keep checking in um and slowly slowly step by step you know it it's amazing what movement can do not just for the body but really more importantly actually for the mind you know the emotional health the mental health and i think at the moment you know i would encourage people to just just give it a go just try as long as you you can connect with the person that you're exercising with that you feel that you can trust them you can open up to them like you were saying i think that's really important um but get, invest in yourself you're important you know you're you're an amazing person you're an amazing being just yeah take that time for yourself especially at the moment because we need it and we need that connection with people now more than ever um are you back online? Are you teaching Zoom classes now that people can join into, or are you oh, outside? Or I'm outside? I mean, I I would do, do outside. It. Yeah, and that I mean, I'm allowed to do it outside one to one in a public space. Great. I can't do my boot camps. Um, so <laughs> one to ones. Yeah. And hopefully, I'll bring them back ASAP. I love the whistle part. <laughs> yeah, I love my whistle. I miss it. I miss it. I might just stop blowing it. Oh, <laughs> I love that. Um, but yeah, I'm doing, most of my clients seem to want to, at the moment, meet face-to-face, be outside in the park. It's like connection. They're in front of their computer, possibly on Zoom calls with work, and they want to get away from the computer, and they want to just go outside and look at the air, look at the trees. I know it's cold, I know it's wet, I know it's windy, but Fine, just though, it's making good that connection, yeah. yeah, and that, most of my clients currently seem to want to do that, and that's that's great. I will do the Zoom. Obviously, if you're busy, the childcare, they're working, they can't make it. Yes, we do it on Zoom. But um, but yeah, I think meeting face to face has a real connection in a way that Zoom sometimes can't. And not to say Zoom has been a fantastic facility. I mean, it's been an yeah, amazing. Sometimes place. you just need to get out and connect physically and be out in nature and just feel like a human being, be in the elements, feel alive again. Yeah. Zoom can't touch that. And that's been a big thing, I think, if you can just get along get out there, get your clothes on, wrap up, just get out there, go and meet that person, see how you feel. I think if you can just find it, just to motivate yourself to do that, have the confidence in yourself to do it. And just, yeah, take take that time for investing in you. I think that's my top tip and it, it will grow from there. It will spiral from there, much like it has for me um, over the last couple of years. I would never have thought, nor I'd be sat here saying this stuff to you, you know, 
sitting at my desk in that job. Legal. So yeah. I'm really grateful. Yeah, it's been up and down. It's been a roller coaster. It's been. Yep, you've done really well in two years. To, I mean, that's fantastic. That's that's really good. That's really good. Thank you. Yeah. I'm, I'm lucky that I've, I've had that support network. I've had those women helping me. I, I wouldn't say it's luck. I think what you put out into the universe, you get back. I'm a huge believer in that. I really believe in in that mirror, um, in the theory of the mirror. What you know, life reflects back to you that which you put out. So, um, we haven't met, but you know, having spoken to you and, and listening to just how much you've accomplished within you know a couple of years and the support system and the group of moms, you know, people don't believe in you without seeing that light inside yeah. of you to pull you through like that i think you must be you almost you must also be quite a loving and very kind and giving individual yourself so that's quite good i hope so <laughs> if, if, if any of this has taught me that yeah it's, that is so important or you know that the simple stuff it really is it's the small stuff the simple stuff and that's you know just just take it down just keep it simple just you know yeah have some confidence in yourself have some faith in yourself and yeah and some compassion for yourself that's um, the biggest thing it's the compassion that yeah the compassion is i think that's that's the key be kind to yourself now because it's not easy yeah be kind to you. set yourself small goals just small steps you know they're achievable you know don't set yourself these huge targets you've got to do this you've got to, you know you've got to do three hours a week just do half an hour just go for a walk take your headphones out maybe and just listen you know i always have my headphones in take them out just listen to the Know, listen to the birds listen to the trees just simple small tiny little things make huge differences i think yeah thank you so much oh, where can people con connect with you on social media are you on instagram or facebook yes. i'm on instagram i'm on facebook and my website is um www.sbfitnesslondon.com but i'm i'm sb fitness london and i'm on instagram yeah i'm on twitter and i'm on facebook um yeah so please I'll leave the links below at the end of the yes um, our chat. absolutely but no it was a pleasure to speak to you nora thank you so much do you have another marathon in the in the plan for the future you know what i don't i said i'd never don't. well i said I'd never do it again <laughs> but you know, never say never i've learned never i admire never. you that's <laughs> the one thing i won't do it's a marathon i'm you a spring not done a marathon never okay. Maybe I just can't see myself. Better. No, I just cannot see myself. I had some clients. Um, shout out to Mark and Adam if they're listening. I absolutely love them. And you know, they they've done marathons, and I just I have such a deep respect for people who can put their bodies through. And I love exercising. I can exercise. It's I love it. Yeah. But a marathon, it's just you have to get into a different mind frame to push your body for that long continuously. The training that goes up to it, how you feel. I just, I couldn't. I couldn't do it. They say it's 90% in the mind running. True. It and, is true. And it's true. It's, it's a mental journey. You know, the legs were moving, but I was almost disconnected. It was all going on in here. It was all going on in here. But yeah, absolutely. I get what you mean. I don't know if I'll never do, ever do another one. Who knows? Maybe. Never know. You have to stay tuned. <laughs> stay tuned. If you can inspire any other women out there to sign up with me, then please do. Oh yes, and is your running club? Your running club will still be going. So put details onto that because I think that's a, the running club. I love it. I love running, so I think that's an amazing thing to do. So um, we we'll leave details um underneath in the comment section. And uh, thank you so much, Sarah. It's been an absolute honor to speak with I you. Love it. It's lovely speaking to you. Thank you so much thank for having me. Really enjoyed it. All right. Likewise. Take care. Have a good one. Bye bye. Right, bye. 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 bye.